And now it's time for us to discuss more of these headlines and simple keywords. Adam joining us via Zoom. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Alina, and happy Wednesday hump day. Yeah, that's right. Today, are you a year younger or two years younger? I'm a year <laughs> younger. Has your birthday passed this year? Because it hasn't passed. No, oh. two years younger. <laughs> this is the Sorry, one. <laughs> I'm, I've, maths wasn't my strongest subject. <laughs> maths? <laughs> God. Uh, yeah, two years younger. Two years right? younger. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If your birthday <laughs> hasn't passed yet, yes, you should yes, be okay. two years younger today. Gosh, it's, it's too early in the morning for me to be doing numbers. Simple math. I <laughs> know. <laughs> uh, Gosh. But I mean, maybe it points to the, the very confusion that the government wanted to tackle. And I think more yeah. the inefficiencies that rise from it, not just fun conversation. So we'll get to that story in just a moment. You're going to have a blast talking about quantum computing when math was not your <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> big subject today. All right. Yeah. All coming up, let's start out with perhaps a better diplomatic relationship with Japan. This is our first keyword of the day. Whitelist. So Japan is putting South Korea back on its white list of trusted trading partners, may, uh, marking the end of a trade dispute that has dragged on for four years. So in light of thawed relationship, uh, the, maybe the trade dispute has come to an end. Tell us the details. Yeah, so there's been a question of will they or won't they, but uh, Japan eventually did uh, put Korea back on the uh, so-called white list of trusted trading partners. And uh, this, of course, uh, is expected to kind of end the Korea-Japan uh, trade dispute uh, that after Korea took a kind of similar measure uh, back in April. Uh, now, the Japanese government will revise its export rule to redesignate Korea as a uh, group A member state, which can benefit from fast track approvals in trade. Now, among the group members are the US, the UK, uh, and France. And through the revision, Japan will ease restrictions on its exports to Korea, uh, including materials and technologies uh, for chips, uh, as well as weapons as well. Now, the latest measure would reduce the time and procedures it takes for Japanese companies to export strategic materials to Korea. Uh, from the current two to three months to about a week. So a substantial cuts in time. Uh, the revision will be published uh, on June 30th, uh, so in a couple of days, and it will take effect on July 21st. Mm. So still a bit of time, so it actually does take effect. Now, the presidential office here welcomed the decision, calling it a symbolic measure recovering bilateral trust and resolving trade uncertainties for the two countries. Uh, it added that bilateral trades and cooperation between the two nations are expected to increase fast. Uh, Seoul's trade ministry also said it will work closely with Tokyo on increasing uh, bilateral and multilateral trade opportunities. Now, either on what impacts the recovery and trade relations with Japan would bring to Korea and whether it will uh, help with Korea's trade deficit of uh, 15 straight months. Um, and meanwhile, Finance Minister uh, Chu Gyeong-ho will meet with his uh, Japanese counterpart tomorrow, in fact, to discuss cooperation uh, in finance and trade and a possible uh, currency swap deal mm. resumption may be uh, something that the two discuss as well. So um, these are all part of efforts to get relations back on track with Japan and economic relations mm. are, of course, uh, key to that as well. All right. So economic recovery first. That's a mutual interest for both countries, it seems. We'll wait and see because, as you've said, technically that uh, upgraded list on the white list takes effect on July 21st. Let's turn our attention to our second uh, keyword of the day. We're aging backwards. This is our second pick. Age change. So Korea is adopting the internationally recognized system for calculating age as of today, but there will be a few exceptions. So maybe we're not clearing the murky waters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still could be a little bit of room for confusion, but uh, uh, the, we call it exceptions, but uh, it's better to say that nothing has changed in those regards. Mm. And what I mean is uh, uh, for buying alcoholic drinks and uh, cigarettes, for example, but uh, onto that in just a little bit. But uh, this uh, rule or uh, system, new uh, system, applies to all judicial and administrative uh, areas uh, in the country that would make the official uh, ages of people one or two years lower than those counted according to the so-called Korean 
uh, age system. That's because the traditional way of age counting here has uh, been to count newborns as one year old and to add a year on the first day of the new year, regardless mm. of birth dates. Now, it's intended to reduce confusion and to uh, comply with basically global norms. Uh, Korea is basically the only country that implements this traditional kind of Korean age system. So uh, it is uh, unique uh, to Korea. Now, the traditional counting system was largely used in social settings and in the workplace where uh, kind of age hierarchies are uh, considered important. Uh, President Yoon sought the change, widely backed by public opinion, when he ran for uh, office last year. Uh, Koreans won't need to update any documents or IDs since the age used for government forms is based on the international system, just like it is for uh, retirement, uh, mm. receiving a pension, as well as voting as well. Uh, mandatory military service and school admissions mm. follow the calendar year uh, and calendar age, which takes into account the year of birth. Mm. Uh, the legal age for buying uh, liquor or cigarettes will remain the same. As I mentioned, as before, uh, stores use calendar age and not Korean age to ensure someone is over um, 19 years old, basically mm. the minimum age in which uh, people can buy uh, drink, uh, alcoholic drinks and cigarettes. That means that those who are born in 2004 or earlier, basically, can buy uh, liquor or cigarettes. There's no change in that. Mm. So basically, it's more of a kind of a social kind of uniformity, if you will, mm. um, basically going along with the global norms. Uh, so it might be some good news for some people who want to be a year or two younger, like myself, for example. <laughs> myself too. I'm two years younger today yeah. because my birthday falls in October and I used to think yeah. it was a gross misrepresentation that I would age two years faster than people yeah. who are also born the same month. But anyway, mm. that's besides the point. We used to have three different age systems, the international, Korean, and counting. The counting is the one that you just refer to, right, In when it comes to drinking, smoking, and military conscription age. We'll hold on to that. But we scrapped the Korean age. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, and on to what delights you. This is our third keyword of the day. Quantum platform. But to be fair, I mean, for most of us, this is uncharted territory. Um, quantum computing is, it seems, finally having a moment for its close-up, and President Yoon clearly recognizes as a, po uh, a possibility for growth. He says he will launch what he calls a quantum platform to boost R&D in quantum science. He hopes this will help create economic value. So what support measures are in store? Yeah, so I won't go into too much detail about quantum computing because that's uh, way over my head uh, as well. And uh, it's all basically about to try and, to, as you said, create economic value. So another future growth engine, hmm. uh, if you will, and nurturing uh, related personnel in that sector as well. Now, President Yu made the remark while meeting with uh, top quantum scholars and students on the sidelines of this event called Quantum Korea uh, 2023, uh, basically an event where uh, experts and uh, scholars in the field gather to discuss the latest trends in quantum uh, physics and computing, if you will. Now, the top office says the so-called quantum platform would be a digital and physical space where quantum experts and legal accounting and business experts from around the world will be uh, able to conduct R&D and share their accomplishments to create economic value. Uh, you can also discuss ways to promote the field and create a global quantum ecosystem. Uh, to that end, so we'll pour in more than 3 trillion won into quantum science and technology by the year uh, 2035. That's more than tenfold the quantum technology funding uh, between the years 2019 um, and this year. Now, Korea aims to become the world's fourth largest powerhouse uh, in the sector. The government will pour uh, 2.4 trillion won into the promising fields of physics and engineering. Mm. By 2035, the private sector will inject a combined 600 billion won by 2027 and then uh, invest more funds after that, considering the pace of technological uh, development and business conditions uh, in efforts to achieve the goal, the government has partnered with uh, corporations and big tech giants such as uh, IBM to train quantum technology uh, experts. Now, Korea plans to increase the number of doctoral quantum researchers from the current um, 384 to 2,500 by uh, the end of this year, as well as the workforce with bachelor's and master's degrees from 1,000 to 10,000 during mm. the same period. So quite a substantial jump. 
And it'll also dispatch 500 local experts uh, overseas every year as well to try and get them even, even uh, better trained in better institutions uh, overseas and uh, companies overseas as well. If you think about it, we ought to not fall behind. I mean, it's about these mechanics that can solve problems that are way too complex for a classic computer, for example. So it makes sense that R&D would be focusing quantum platform, as the president has put. We'll leave it there for now because you're right. <laughs> Going to details, it goes right over my head. But what I do know right. for sure is that IBM and Google has been having this intense face-off in quantum computing. Who comes yeah. out first and triumphant? That seems to be a, a big point of contention, too. <laughs> so All right, let's move on to our fourth keyword of the day. Noodle price cuts. So Korea's top ramen maker Nongshim says it will cut prices of its flagship ramen and snack products. That coming to government pressure to lower costs, this probably implies that other food makers who sell similar products, ramen and snacks, might have to follow suit. Yeah, those are basically products that rely on uh, wheat as yeah. a key ingredient uh, to uh, just uh, name a few. Now, um, this we talked about this uh, meeting that was held between the government and these. Uh, you know, uh, flour milling uh, industry companies uh, and these snack companies um, and how the government pressured them to lower prices, especially amid uh, a fall in wheat prices. Now, the company, uh, Nongshim, said it will cut the prices of shin ramyeon and uh, shrimp crackers, or seokgang as it's known in Korea, by 4.5% and 6.9% respectively, starting uh, this Saturday. Now, based on their retail prices, the price of Shin Ramyeon will be lowered from 1,001 to 950,001 on average. Um, the price for shrimp crackers will be down from 1,501 to 1,401. This marks the first time in 13 years that Nongshim has uh, decided to cut the price of its top-selling instant noodles. The company said the rare decision came a day after uh, local milling firms agreed to lower the supply price of wheat by 5% from uh, Saturday. So it seems like it's a kind of a collective opinion. Mm. Uh, with the upcoming cuts in wheat prices, Nongshin predicted it could reduce uh, operational costs worth 8 billion won annually, and it expects more than 20 billion won of direct benefits for consumers as well uh, every year. Now, other noodle makers are also following suit. Uh, Samyang Food, for one, said it will start reducing the prices of 12 major products by an average of 4.7% in phases starting July 1st, so it's also Saturday. Uh, on average, consumers or customers can expect a decrease of 4.7% across all the product lineup. Uh, other major ramen produ uh, producers such as uh, Ottugi and Paito are also thinking mm. uh, about lowering prices as well. Um, they, Ottugi, for one, has decided or is considering of lowering them, but they just haven't decided on how much they'll lower mm. them by. Now, this could also pave the way, uh, hopefully, for price cuts in other sectors of the food industry, including uh, bread and other snacks, uh, which also use wheat as a crucial uh, ingredient. So mm. we'll have to see. Um, Nongshin, for one, uh, also produces, um, you know, other potato snacks and uh, other products as well, snack mm. products. So we'll have to see if there are price cuts and by how much uh, going forward as well. So. All in all, good news for consumers and snack <laughs> lovers like myself. <laughs> uh, it seems that pundits are raising questions or whether or not, maybe it's a little bit too early for us to jump to this conclusion, but will other products like milk-based products and alcohol mm. beverage, for example, also follow suit with what wheat-based products have done? We'll have to wait and see. Remember mm. the conversation on milkflation? It got really expensive yeah. at one point, right? Yeah, dairy products, eggs as well was yeah. one of those products that uh, suffer from high prices. Uh, alcoholic beverages, uh, so it's a bit of a tough one because yeah. alcoholic beverages uh, in Korea are expensive uh, anyway because of the whole taxing system that's mm. implemented in Korea. So it's not really uh, directly uh, related to inflation, but uh, you know, any any price cut is good news. So we'll have to see how <laughs> how far it spreads. Spoken for the consumers. With that, we move on to <laughs> our final keyword of the day. School support. So the ruling party and the government have agreed to provide extra funding of some 24 million won per school for air conditioning. So the gov uh, government wants to provide aid for a safer summer. Yeah, safer summer and a cooler summer, uh, that as well. Uh, they say they aim to create a pleasant learning environment uh, without these 
hot classrooms by uh, allocating sufficient funds uh, to schools. Therefore, the funding will increase from, uh, or oh, sorry, to 76.5 uh, million one. Additionally, the government will inspect the cooling facilities in schools as well. It will also provide about 530 billion won to the education office to improve uh, educational facilities, including replacing outdated uh, air conditioners. Uh, the ruling party and government also agreed to expand the number of underprivileged households that can receive uh, energy vouchers to over 1.1 million households from the current uh, 857,000. And they'll also raise the value of each voucher to 43,000 won from the current 40,000 won. Uh, also, the supply of high-efficiency energy devices to vulnerable groups will be increased by uh, 1,500 to a total of 15,000, so mm. quite a jump. Now, in July and August, the government will additionally support up to 500,000 won uh, in cooling costs for social welfare facilities used by the elderly children and other uh, socially vulnerable groups. Now, um, just a one tip uh, on that uh, uh, high-energy efficient devices if you use an inverter air conditioner for example mm. just wanted to point that out it's uh, more uh, cost efficient if you keep it on actually rather than switching it off and on so you know top tip for the summer <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much adam we appreciate it we'll see you tomorrow you're very welcome see you tomorrow if you're listening to our program using the podcast service just a reminder that we do go live monday through friday 7 a.m korea standard time so tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.